everyone, it's Jennifer from FiberFlux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the Autumn Foliage Wrap. This is a beautiful seasonal wrap made with some lovely fall colors. And this is um, a unique trapezoid shape. So we're going to learn how to create a flat bottom and then do some increases so that it comes up to a point on either side. And then we're going to learn how to um, add some tassels to it, a really easy way, no special tools way to make some tassels. And we're going to learn how to do some finish work and this lovely double V stitch, which I've used in the past. It's a really easy stitch and it's a lovely lacy and it's simple enough to not really compete with this variegated yarn too much. Now, if we open our wrap back up, the finished piece measures across the bottom about 20 inches and then up either side it's 21 inches on either side. Each tassel is about three and a half inches tall and then the top edge, not including the tassel, just the top edge of the um, trapezoid shape is about 54 inches across and we've used a bulky yarn to kind of make this extra cozy. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful if you're after a certain size. We're gonna be using a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey in purple. I'll put the link down below and a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. And the yarn we're gonna be using is this gorgeous fall yarn. This is called Amigo Aquarelle by Hobie in the chunky version. This is um, such a pretty color and special thanks to Hobie for sending me this yarn as well. Um, I've been sharing on Instagram some of the process um, uh, work in progress photos on there. If you'd like to see them, hop on over to my Instagram. The color we're going to be using is, uh, it's color 11, but it's also on the website called Cognac Rust. So it's like some really pretty um, rust and brown and kind of like a white background. It sort of has like a watercolor effect. So um, I'm going to be using four balls of this for our little wrap. And um, this is, each ball of this is um, 109 yards and 100 meters. So I'll be using four balls. So if you use a total of 436 yards or 400 meters of a chunky yarn, a bulky yarn, um, it is a five bulky on the yarn weight scale. You'll be just fine if you need to substitute, but I'll be using four balls of this, all four in the same color as well. Now, as a side note, this yarn is um, machine washable and 100% acrylic as well. And I will also put the link to this yarn uh, down below too, if you would like to check it out. Also, we're gonna begin by making our tassels first. So our shape of our wrap is um, going to be sort of like an upside down triangle with a flat bottom. Um, so what we're gonna do is put a tassel at either end and not only is that pretty, but it sort of like gives it a, a touch of weight. So when you wear it, it sort of helps it stay on. So we're gonna make the tassels first because uh, we don't have to worry about as we're making our wrap, trying to save a certain amount of yarn that we're not sure of. So we're gonna just go ahead and make those first put them aside and then work on the wrap. So let's grab one ball of our yarn here and I'm just gonna take this yarn label off. And so if you have never made a tassel, it's super easy. What we're gonna do, we're gonna make um, one together but then you'll also need to make a second one. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take a piece of yarn about, I would say about 12 inches long and cut it. Then take another piece of yarn the same length and cut it. And then what we're gonna do, and put those aside, then what we're gonna do is take our yarn and you're gonna let the yarn hang down the front of your hand like this, okay? Then you're gonna wrap the yarn around all four fingers. And if you want a very kind of thick, plushy looking tassel, you're gonna do lots of wraps. If you want sort of like a thinner, drapier tassel, do less wraps. I'm gonna make my tassel with, with 12 wraps around my fingers. That'll give us kind of like a medium in between size, okay? So once again, let the yarn fall down the front of your hand, and every time you go around the top is when I count as a, um, a pass, okay? So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 
and 12, okay? Then what you're gonna do is let the other end hang down at the bottom too and just, just give it a little snip, okay? So you have a little bundle in your hand. Then grab one of your pieces of yarn and you're gonna just kind of tuck it up under, go inside that bundle and gently pull your hand out, take the yarn, and you're just gonna carefully tie it at the top, okay? So tie it once, twice, and a third time if you really want to. I think this is okay though. And then you have this little yarn bundle that you're gonna have for the beginnings of your tassel. Then what you'll wanna do is lay the second piece of yarn down on your table, and then you're gonna take the top. Now this top part that we just tied, this is what we're gonna to use to tie onto the wrap. So don't cut this, just leave this intact for now until you're ready to put it on your wrap. And then what you're gonna do is lay your little bundle down on this yarn, and I would say it's about a third of the way down from the top. So you have like third, 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 just one third of the way down. And then you're gonna take your yarn and you're gonna tie it. I would say once and then once more. And we have what is starting to look like a tassel. So at this point, I sort of like to go through and like, if I need to, um, pull some things down a little bit more snug. Now if you notice, one of the ties that we had, well, let me just zoom in so you can see, one of the ties that we tied goes nice and perfectly straight down. The other one sort of sticks up. So what I like to do is when I'm making tassels, and again we want to keep these out of the way, is that one that's sticking up, grab your tapestry needle and thread it, and then we're just going to go into the top part of this and through, and make sure you get up under that band, and we're just going to sort of weave it in, okay, just to get it tucked in so it's not sticking out, okay? Now, everything is laying nice and neat, okay? The last thing we need to do for our tassel is to grab your scissors, and as a side note, larger scissors probably would have been a little bit better for this, but it's okay, it's all good. What we're gonna do next is cut all the loops at the bottom, okay? So go ahead, and any loops that you see, just go ahead and cut. Again, larger scissors, scissors would have been a little bit easier. Oops, and I found two more. So give it a little shake, straighten everything out, and then what you need to do is give it a little haircut across the bottom. So straighten it all out nice and smooth, and then we're gonna flip it over and take your scissors and just give it a nice, neat snip across, okay? Just like that. You need to come back in and do another pass or two to get it neat, totally fine. Okay, then you might have some yarn crumbs, that's okay too. So then what we're gonna do is sort of like straighten it out, make sure there's no long pieces, and then you have a beautiful tassel for your wrap. So then what we're gonna do is make the second tassel and just put both of them aside. And the next thing we're gonna do is jump right in, grabbing the rest of our yarn, and what's left on this one, um, which we use just a tiny amount of yarn for this. But we're gonna jump right into the crocheting part next. Okay, so I went ahead and made the second tassel, and so we're just gonna put these aside now until we're done our wrap, okay? So we'll add those later. So I have my yarn and my hook, and the first thing we're gonna do is put a slip knot on our hook. So what we wanna do, and let me just make sure, there we go, we're gonna zoom in just a little. What we're gonna do is wrap the yarn around our fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Then we're gonna do a starting chain of 53. So like I said before, this is sort of like a triangle shape with the pointy top cut off and sort of flipped over. It's a trapezoid. So it's gonna be, um, we're gonna start at the bottom, the, the narrower part of our shape, and then we're gonna work upward and outward, and it'll have a flat top as well. So we have a starting chain of 53. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 
36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, and 53. So here is our starting chain, and that will give you an idea of this bottom edge that we're creating, okay? The other thing too I like to mention is if you're having trouble with your starting chain being too tight, which is a question I get quite a bit, go up a hook size for your starting chain only and then go back down to the K hook for the rest of your project. Okay, so to begin, what we're gonna do is work our first, we're gonna do a double V stitch. I've used this stitch before. It's really easy to do. It's uh, like the V stitch, but it's a double V, okay? So we're gonna go in the fifth chain from the hook. This loop here does not count. So go one, two, three, four, and five. In this fifth chain here, we're gonna work our first double V. The double V will be two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, okay? So to make a double crochet, we're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that fifth chain from the hook, and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then we're gonna work another double crochet into that same chain. Then we're going to chain one, and then in that same chain, we're gonna work two more double crochet. So one double crochet and two double crochet. So here's our first double V stitch. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make another double V. So two double crochet, one and two, and chain one and two double crochet, one and two, all in that same chain. So you can see we have two double V stitches side by side. And I love this fall, chunky yarn look it's so pretty and you can see there is some some uh like a rust going on and some almost like a bronzy color it's so pretty and there's a lot of variation okay next skip three chains one two three and in the chain after that work your next double v two double crochet one and two and then we're going to chain one and then in that same chain two more double crochet one and two. Same thing, skip three chains and then in the chain after that work your next double V. Two double crochet, one and two, chain one and then two more double crochet. One and two, all in that same chain. Skip three chains and in the chain after that Work your next double V. Two double crochet, one, two, chain one, and then two more double crochet in that same chain. Skip three chains, chain after that, work your next double V. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, all in that same chain just like that, okay? Skip three chains, one, two, three, in the chain after that, work your next double V. Two double crochet, one and two, then a chain one, and then two more double crochet, one and two. I just wanted to point out here, right off the camera, I have my center pool ball of yarn, which is really nice. Uh, makes it really handy and keeps it nice and neat. Okay, skip three chains, one, two, three, and the chain after that, work your next double V. Double crochet, double crochet, chain one, and then in the same chain, double crochet, double crochet. All right, moving right along, skip three chains, and the chain after that, work your next double V double crochet, double crochet, chain one, and then two more double crochet on that same chain. Okay, 
I also um, don't didn't know if you noticed, but as I'm skipping my chains, I'm making sure if I need to turn my chains, making sure your chains aren't twisting around, okay? Skip three chains in the chain after that, work your next double V, double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and double crochet. Just like that. We're making some good progress. Skip three chains, the chain after that, work your next double V, double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and double crochet. All right, just got a little bit left here. Skip three chains in the chain after that, do your next double V, double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and double crochet. All right, we have just four chains left. So what we need to do at the end, because we're going to be building outward, is we're gonna put one more double V at the end of the, the row here. So skip three chains, and in that very last chain, do a double V in that last chain as well. Double crochet, double crochet, chain one, and two more double crochets in that last chain. Double crochet, and a double crochet. Okay, so row one is complete. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see what we've got here. And it looks really nice. We have some lovely coloring and nice variegated yarn colors showing up now. So what we're gonna do for row two is now row two is going to be a lot easier because we are not going to be counting chains and skipping things and stuff like that. We're just going to be working into the center of each one of these V's that we created. Remember that chain one that we did in the middle? We're just going to work in the middle of those V's, okay? So let's zoom back in so you can see what I'm doing here. One, two, three, and turn our work. And then in this first V that you come to, right at the beginning, right in that chain one space, we're gonna work our first double V. So double crochet, double crochet, chain one, and then two double crochet. One and two, just like that. Then we're gonna hop over here, and in that next V, we're gonna do the same thing. Two double crochet, one and two, and then chain one, and then two double crochet, one and two. Hop over to the next one, and we're just gonna do this all the way across. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, one, and two. Hop over to the next one, and we're gonna do the same thing. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. You can see how easy this row two is. And as a side note, row two is the row you do for the entire rest of the project, okay? Hop over to the next, V and do two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Okay, so if you've kind of gotten the hang of this, you can skip forward to the end of this row, but if you wanna hang out with me and crochet, that's awesome too. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the next V. Just like that. Hop over to the next V and do the same thing two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. And you can see we've only done two rows and we have quite 
a bit of uh, work done because of the um, bulky yarn. All right, hop over to the next V. We are making a lot of progress here. Two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet, just like that. Hop over to the next V, two double crochet, one and two, and a chain one, and two double crochet. Hop over to the next V, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Next V, same thing, two double crochet, one, two, chain one, and two double crochet. Next V, almost to the end here, two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet. And the last V of the row, you'll do the same thing, two double crochet, Whoops, I dropped a loop there. Let's try that one more time. If you ever need to back up and redo a stitch, definitely do that. Makes a big difference. Two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet in that last double V. Now, in addition, we're also gonna work a double V in the turning chain space. So you might need to go off to the side a little bit because we have V stitches, they open up and they push things down. So you might have to look for it a little bit, but you can see our, our last double V of the row here, those two double crochets and those two double crochets, and then you have this turning chain off to the side, that space right there in between that last V and that turning chain is a turning chain space. So we're gonna work a double V in that turning chain space as well to finish off the row. All right, so two double crochet, one and two, chain one, and then two double crochet, one and two, all in that turning chain space. That's what's gonna give us this wide angle that's gonna come out, okay? So row one, so row two is complete, and what you're gonna do for the rest of your piece is just keep repeating row two over and over and over again until your uh, wrap is as tall as you would like it to be and as wide as you would like it to be. I'm gonna keep going and work through all of my balls of yarn and then we're gonna rejoin towards the end of the piece and I'm gonna show you how to attach these beautiful little tassels on and finish up your piece. When you're ready to join a new ball of yarn, there's lots of different ways to do it. You could just cut it and tie the new piece of yarn on, but because I'm sticking with the same color for all four balls of yarn, it's really easy to do it this way. Um, we're gonna do kind of like an invisible join where you take one piece of yarn, your new ball of yarn going one way, and your end from when you ran out of yarn going the opposite way. So you sort of like lay them side by side and then what you'll do is you'll take the first piece of yarn and tie it onto the second piece of yarn. And you don't need to do a lot of heavy knots because um, it'll add some bulk to it. And then what you wanna do, whoops, we got all mixed up here. Take your second piece of yarn and tie it onto your first piece of yarn. Okay, so you're sort of making like big circle here, okay? So just um, tie it on just like that. See how we have the two knots here? And then take the, the yarn ends, pull them together like that, and you'll have, get it all straightened out if you need to, mine bunched up a little. Then you'll just have two little tails. Grab your scissors and carefully cut the end as close to the knot as possible. Don't snip the knot, because the knot will fall apart. And you can snip it on both ends like that. And then you'll have this strand, and because I'm using the same color and it's kind of chunky, the knot will just blend right in, okay? So you can join your yarn like that if you like. All right, we're just coming up to the end of the last row. I'm gonna work that last little 
double V in the turning chain space like we've been doing. And then when we're done, grab your scissors and cut the yarn leaving a little tail. So we're gonna weave that in. And then wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through to fasten off, okay? So next, we need to do a little bit of finish work. If you had some ends that you wanted to weave in, uh, or needed to weave in rather, go ahead and do that now. Um, I've done some of them, but we're gonna do a couple of these together. So I have the one from where we started here. I'm just gonna take my tapestry needle and thread it on there. And you'll wanna make sure you get one that, because this is chunky yarn, to um, enable you to thread it through the eye. You don't want your needle to be too small. Um, now with lace, what you'll need to do sometimes is go in and out, almost like you're sewing, and do that a couple of times before you get to a thicker area where you can weave the end in. So I'm sort of like sewing it up into the piece a little bit more and see it sort of blends with the lacy Vs that we've created. And so now I'm in a more um, denser section, if you will, of the piece where one of these fans is. So I'm gonna go in one direction with my needle and come back in the other direction. And then go ahead and weave, or trim rather. We wove, now we're trimming. Trim that tail and it'll sort of disappear. And I just want to point out how pretty this looks, all stitched up. I'm so excited about it. I love these colors. They're so fun and seasonal. And then we have a, a tail where we left off just now. And again, if you need to sort of sew it up into a more denser part where the lace, um, lacy part gets a little bit uh, thicker or fuller, I guess you could say, go ahead and do that. But this part, I didn't need to do that. So I'm just gonna, same thing, go in one direction, come back in the other direction. All right, we're gonna look at our handiwork and then we're gonna add some tassels. So go ahead and trim that as well. And then you can give it a little tug and it'll disappear. Okay, so we have this gorgeous, let me just zoom out so you can see it a little bit better. We have this gorgeous wrap. It is so lovely. And as you can see, as we stitched it up more, we have the flat bottom that we established and we have, it came outward and upward and then across the top is the widest part. So earlier we made some tassels. So in these upper points where it comes up to a point on either side, we're gonna add the tassels. And I'm gonna grab one of them and we're gonna need our tapestry needle and scissors because I'm gonna show you how to weave in ends for a tassel, it's super duper easy. So let's zoom back in so you can see. And you're just gonna grab one of the ends and your tassel. And then in the turning chain space or whatever space you have at the end of your row, you can use your fingers, you don't need a tapestry needle for this part. But go ahead and guide that through and we're just gonna tie it a couple of times. Now anything you wear, you wanna make sure you do nice strong knots so that as you wear it and it moves around a lot and gets tossed around or whatever, um, everything will be safe and secure. So for tassels, it's super easy. Um, now you can weave them up into the piece if you want to, but I like to take an end, thread it on my tapestry needle and come back down through the tassel and pull it snug and it just totally disappears. And then do that for the other tail as well. And just go right down the middle there with it. And just give it a nice tug. Straighten anything out that needs to be straightened out. And then those two ends that we did, you can just give them a snip to snip them flush with the other tassel ends. And then you have a gorgeous tassel. So come down to the other end here and just do the same exact thing. Grab your tassel, grab the uh, space that you see on the side, go all the way to the, the edge with that, and then we're gonna tie it one, two, three times, get it nice and strong. My piece keeps wanting to slide towards me. And then um, 
just do the same thing. Thread your tass uh, tail, rather, and then run it through the tassel. Make sure you go up under that band that we created. Give it a tug. Repeat for the other tail. Send it through. Give it a tug. Get everything straightened out. And then with your scissors, you can cut those two ends flush to the rest of the tassel. Just do that nice and careful. So you're cutting only what you want to cut. And that's it. So it looks fabulous. And let me just bring these down so you can sort of see it. Now you can go to, over to the blog too to see how you can style your wrap as well. There's a bunch of different ways you can wrap this. So that's it. That's how you crochet the autumn foliage wrap. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again.